I know the Eastern minds have also absorbed this in a horribly mm, distorted way. But right now if you told your friend or your relative, I am going to the ashram for three days, they would become very kind towards you and ask, why, what went wrong? Something must be wrong with your life. You are going to the ashram to heal a wound, to solace yourself. Something must be really wrong with your life or you must be too old for life. Otherwise, why would you go to an ashram? So this has crept into this culture also. Essentially, If you are alive only in parts or if you are partially alive, to be partially alive, to be partially alive is a terrible torture. Many of you have been through these science classes, I am sure you opened up frogs and cockroaches, did you? They were nice lively beings but you opened them up because you wanted to find their heart and liver and kidney. Half alive, being half alive is torture. Have you seen this? Always being half alive is torture. This is the torture that a large segment of humanity is going through right now because they are half alive. Only one part of them has become alive. Only their physicality and mentality has become alive. The rest of it is yet to become alive. Half alive people will suffer everything. They will suffer ignorance. They will suffer education. They will suffer poverty. They will suffer affluence. They will suffer being alone, they will suffer being in a relationship. If they are not married, they suffer. If they are married, they, they… If they don't have children, they suffer that. As if children, if they are there, they can come and bite you. They do. No children, what are you suffering? But that also they suffer. Just show me one thing that human beings are not suffering right now. Just show me one aspect of life that human beings are not suffering right now. They are suffering just about anything, not just life. They are even suffering death before it happens. See, he's thinking of a building a pyramid for himself. <laughs> That which is and that which is not, everything they suffer. This is not… You are not suffering loneliness, you are not suffering company, you are not suffering money, you are not suffering poverty. What you are suffering is you are half alive. You are desperately trying to make yourself fully alive through money, through drink, through sex, through going on a trek, coming to the ashram. <laughs> In so many ways, you are somehow trying to make yourself fully alive, which is yet to happen fully. Here and there you feel a burst of aliveness, but again it ebbs down. So, when people are constantly half alive, pleasure becomes an important part of your life very important part of your life. Without it, you cannot exist. Pleasure becomes paramount in your life when you are only half alive, when physicality is all that you know. Pleasure becomes of immense importance in your life. 
If you become fully alive, you will become so blissful, joyful, ecstatic without reason. Bursts of ecstasy without, within you without any reason. It's almost embarrassing. Now, the thought of pleasure just evaporates. Looking for a drink, looking for some kind of pleasurable thing just evaporates out of your mind because you're fully alive. When you're fully alive, pleasure disappears. When you're half dead, pleasure is an important, important thing. If you try to control the variety of situations that may pop up in your face tomorrow morning, all that will happen is you will become a very limited life. You would step out into the world and do whatever that needs to be done, only if you have an assurance, no matter what you walk into, you will not lose yourself. You will walk full stride, otherwise you'll only be a half a step. Most human beings are half steps because the fear of suffering, if this happens, what will happen to me? If that happens, what will happen to me? If you're well managed within yourself, you know how to manage your thought, you know how to manage your emotion, you know how to manage your body, your chemistry, your energy. If you know how to manage all this, what does it matter if you walk into hell, I'm asking? If you are well managed, if you are a heaven within you, what does it matter where you go? Hell also will be an interesting place to go. But if you are ill-managed, then you want to be in a nice place all the time. You will not step out into anything. I am not saying this is wrong. This is against nature because in nature, every life is aspiring to be as much as it can be, isn't it? Every life is naturally aspiring, this is not a philosophy, this is not an ideology that you must do this or that. It is natural and intrinsic for every life that it will do as much as it can. From an earthworm, from a worm to an insect to a bird to an animal to a tree, every one of them are trying to be full-fledged life. If you go against this simply because of the fear of suffering, then all possibilities of exploring the nature of being human, the tremendous immensity of being human is just lost upon humanity. Today, you will see this everywhere when people say, I am only human. They are talking about the limitations of being human. They are not talking about the possibilities of being human, isn't it? When if we are the most intelligent species on the planet, if we are the most capable species on the planet, should we be talking about our possibilities or should we be talking about our limitations? Whenever anybody writes or says, oh, we are human, they are always referring to their limitations, never to the possibilities of being human. This is because the, the most fundamental things have not been taught in our education systems, how to handle your thought and your emotion. Your psychological drama has gone out of control. <laughs> it's a badly directed drama, believe me. If it was a well-directed drama, you would take it to the conclusion that you want, isn't it? Because it's a badly directed drama, just about anybody can take charge of it. Who is the director of your psychological drama? Just about anybody, isn't it? Anybody can make it into a tragedy. <laughs> the reason why people have not even learned to manage their thought and emotion, by the time you are ten, you should have learnt it. At sixty, people still don't know how to manage their thought and emotion. They are standing up like ghosts in their life. They don't need anybody's help. They can go on endlessly creating suffering for themselves. If you have a normal process of mental faculty and you do not know how to use it, it means the same thing, yes or no? Yes. Does it mean the same thing or no? You don't have a normal hand, then you can't use it, that's different. We will look at you compassionately. But you have a normal hand and you don't know how to use it. Whatever word you use to call yourself, don't tell me, 
But the same thing goes if you don't know how to use your thought and emotion towards your well-being, isn't it? Because ill-managed, because the fundamentals of life are not grasped, what is the nature of my existence? If you don't know this, how do you manage it? Only if you grasp the nature of something, then you learn to manage it, isn't it? You don't even see what it is, how to manage it, there is no way to manage it. So the first and foremost thing, that's why, is called realization, you must understand this. In this country, in this culture, we never refer to any kind of spiritual realization as an attainment. We only said it is a realization. Realization means you simply saw what is already there. You did not invent anything. You did not climb the top of a mountain. You are beginning to see everything just the way it is. But that has become such a rarity <laughs> that it is being hugely valued. Someone was asking me three days ago, I was in Kerala, Sadhguru, you seem to know everything. I said, see, there is only one thing I know. I know this one thing from its origin to its ultimate. The first step towards the freedom from suffering is the recognition of suffering. When you recognize that there is suffering, then only you can do something about it. Then only you can do something which will put an end to it or make you go beyond it. This is what happened with Buddha. It is suffering alone which turned Gautam Siddharth into Buddha. He was a prince and he had everything that one can ask for on the material level. But it was suffering which brought him on the spiritual path. But the suffering that made him walk the spiritual path was not his own. He saw people suffer around him. And this made him question his very existence. And he left his palace to practice spiritual disciplines. And after six years of spiritual practice, he finally recognized who he really was beyond this body-mind complex. He realized his divine infinite nature. After self-realization, after enlightenment, he gave to the world the four noble truths which are known to be the most important Buddhist teachings. If one can apply these truths in his life, then it will take him beyond all suffering. Allow me to briefly tell you what these four truths are all about. First noble truth is there is suffering there is Dukkha. So basically this is the recognition of suffering. As I told you that unless you recognize that there is suffering, how can you really go beyond it? Then the second noble truth says, there is the cause of suffering. If suffering is there, then there also must be its cause. Without the cause, how can there be any suffering? But first you recognize that there is suffering and then you look for its cause. Then the third noble truth says, there is cessation of suffering, which means you can put an end 
to suffering and how can you put an end to your suffering this is what is contained in the fourth noble truth which says there is a path which leads to the cessation of suffering in buddhism it is known as the eightfold noble path it consists of eight steps namely right understanding right thought right speech right effort right action right livelihood right mindfulness and right concentration of all these eight steps the first one which is right understanding is the most important one because without right understanding how can you have right thought without right understanding you will have wrong thoughts in your mind and with all the wrong thoughts in your mind how can you say something which is right so right speech has its root in right thought which in turn has its root in right understanding the same is the case with right effort which is always followed by right thought so right effort has its root in right thought which again has its root in right understanding and without right effort how can you act right how can you do right action without right effort so right action will always be the outcome of right effort which has its root in right thought and without right action right livelihood is not possible and without all of these right mindfulness and right concentration are impossible so the path which leads to the cessation of suffering starts with right understanding let me just briefly tell you what this right understanding really is right understanding is the discrimination between what is real and what is unreal if you know what is real and what is unreal then you have right understanding now tell me what is real anything which doesn't change with the passage of time is considered real and that which changes with time is unreal now look around and see what changes with time if you look closely you'll find that everything without exception changes with time including your body and mind so this is all unreal this world with all its forms including your body and mind which undergo change every bit of a second it is all unreal and if all this is unreal then what is real that which sees the unreal is real and that is the real you the witnessing consciousness which is immutable which doesn't change at all so this distinction between what is real and what is unreal is right understanding and this right understanding is the foundation of all spirituality this right understanding alone can make you realize your divine infinite nature and when you realize your divine infinite nature at that very moment all your suffering will come to an end <laughs>